So the feet together, the knees open wide, and then just gently roll yourself back. And we're gonna start actually with a mudra through the hands. So interlacing all but the thumbs, just begin to rest the palms onto your chest with the elbows hang heavy. So this is your trust mudra. The thing about the present moment is that in order to be present, we have to maintain some level of trust for what's to come, what's behind us, just allowing ourselves to sort of hover here in the moment that we're in. So just take a few breaths, just breathing into the body, clearing physical space through the bones, the muscles, the joints. as well as mental space for the mind, thoughts. Noticing the condition of your heart, how you're feeling, and just kind of answering these questions honestly. Sometimes we just say we're fine. And if you are, that's awesome. But if you're not, just be present with it. And after you've cleared some space, just begin to focus on your breath. Notice the rise and the fall. Setting a rhythm with your breath right here from the start. Let's take about three more breaths here, maybe settling into an intention for your practice. It could be as simple as a little mantra. Maybe it's a little more detailed, like a prayer. But it's all yours. On your next breath in, we'll send the arms overhead, the legs out nice and long, taking a full body stretch here as you breathe in. And then sigh it out. From here, drawing the knees into the chest. And give yourself a little rock side to side, massaging through the low back. And then we'll grab for the hamstrings and just begin to simply rock and roll yourself front to back a couple of times. And once you have rocked a couple of times, we'll make our way up to a tabletop position, so aligning the shoulders above the wrists, the hips right above the knees. Spread your fingers super duper wide here so you feel a stretch in between the fingers. Take an inhale, stretch your heart forward, lift your tailbone high, and then as you exhale, round through your back. Pushing the air out, feel the low belly draw in. Inhale, belly drops, heart reaches. Exhale, round. Good, and then take about five or six more breaths here, just kind of moving through whatever feels good. So I like to take some little side to side motions through the hips. You can even press back to a child's pose for a moment. And we'll take two more wherever you are. Eventually come back into a neutral spine. We'll tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and back, coming into your first downward facing dog. Just like tabletop, you can take some moments to kind of shake out anything that feels tight or tense. Use your breath as a way to explore the body. Those inhales create space and awareness. The exhales allow us to settle. Let's take one more right here. On an inhale, begin to roll forward into your plank pose. And then as you exhale, tap your knees, your chest, and your chin all the way down really gently. If you're avoiding the belly, you can just stay in tabletop and come into your cow pose. But if you're on the belly, press into your hands, lift your chest, coming into cobra. Elbows nice and bent, spine is long. Exhale, lower. Inhale, we'll lift up again, pressing into the feet as well as the hands. Exhale, lower. 
in your next inhale, lift it up. This time, not using the strength of the hands, just kind of hover the palms up, maybe even reach the arms straight back. Take three breaths here. And then lower yourself back down. Pressing yourself all the way back up and into your downward facing dog. Take a big breath in and exhale. Your next inhale, roll yourself back forward into your tabletop position, tapping the knees down hips are level. We'll begin to send the left leg back and just press into the ball of the foot a couple of times, just stretching through the calf muscle. Eventually lifting the heel of that left foot up, stretch your gaze forward. Take a big inhale here as you begin to bend into your left knee. Imagine tapping your toes toward the back of the head. Feeling that hamstring fire up. We'll take one more breath here. Exhale, draw the knee forward to your nose, rounding through the back, just like that angry cat pose. Inhale, send it straight up. Exhale, draw it in. One more just like that. Inhale. Exhale. Good. This time as you inhale, send it back. We'll straighten out the legs. You tap the toes down. Gently spin the right toes over as you lift your heart, lift your chest opening out through that left arm. And just breathing into the front body here, modified wild thing. So we'll do the full version of this pose later on, but you're always welcome to come back here. One more breath in. And exhale, slowly come back around. Gently turn on the back knee. Draw your left foot through in between the hands. Step the foot down. Letting the hips settle in here. When you're ready, rise up into your kneeling crescent. So back knee is down, hips are gently energized. So feeling that outer left hip draw toward the right inner thigh. When you're ready, on an inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, settle in. Shoulders relax, any arm variations you wanna take here. Let's take one more big inhale here. Maybe looking up to the fingertips. As you exhale, reach that left arm back, right arm forward. Breathing into the twist, let the strength of your breath and your core guide the rotation through the spine. Good for this last breath. If you'd like, place your left hand to your low back or back leg, right arm up toward the sky. Breathing in here. And then as you breathe out, gently begin to place those hands down, tuck through the back toes, lift the back knee, step back into your plank. This time, take an inhale, shift your shoulders just beyond the wrist. You can lower all the way to the belly once more, or this time come halfway down to Chaturanga. Inhale into Upward Facing Dog or Cobra. And exhale, gently make your way up and back, Downward Facing Dog. Let's take a three deep breaths here. Good. On your next inhale, begin to roll yourself forward, tap your knees down, coming into tabletop. Once you arrive, we'll extend that right foot to the back of the mat, stretching out through the back of the leg for a moment. When you're ready, we'll lift that right leg up, bending into the right knee. Imagine you could come into that cow pose here, reaching your head toward the toes, toes toward the head. Don't overdo it. Try to keep those hips nice and level. We'll take two more. One more inhale. As you exhale, draw the knee forward toward the nose. Inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, draw it forward. One more time, inhale. Exhale. This time as you inhale, send it straight back. Begin to open out to your modified wild thing. This time right arm lifts up and overhead. And just breathing into the side body, the front of the chest here. Nothing is glued down, you can always move around. One more breath. 
Eventually, gently turning back to face the front of the room, step the right foot through in between the hands. Setting up for kneeling crescent, back knee is down. Arms and chest lift when you're ready, inner thighs are active. Breathing. Good, any variation you'd like with the arms. We'll take one more breath here. Maybe looking up in between the fingers. And then as you exhale, we'll begin to reach that right arm back, left arm forward. Inner thighs are nice and strong here. Utilize the core as you twist. Good for this last breath, right hand can land to the low back or back leg as your left arm lifts up. One more inhale here. And exhale, cartwheel those hands all the way down. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee up as you step back. This time use your next exhale to move right into your flow. However you wanna flow is fine. You can always come back to the cat-cow movement if that works better. Landing into your down dog, let's take three deep breaths. This last one, let's sigh it out of the mouth, a nice cleansing breath. So breathing in, stick your tongue out, let it go. Bending your knees, look forward, step or take a hop all the way up to the top of the mat. Be gentle with yourself as you move. Take an inhale to lift you halfway up. Exhale to fold. On your next breath in, we'll rise all the way to standing. Arms will lift, heart will lift up and back as your tailbone drops slightly down. Take one more inhale here. And then exhale, hands draw to your heart. Take a moment, maybe finding that trust mudra we found at the beginning of class. And when you're ready, arms will lift upward toward the sky. As you exhale, we'll pour right down into our forward bend. Inhale to lift you halfway up, heart reaches forward. As you exhale, step it back right into your plank pose. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, pass down through your chaturanga. Inhale into cobra, upward facing, or if you're in tabletop, your cow. Exhale to downward facing dog. Take one breath in, sigh it out. In your down dog, bend your knees, look forward, take a few steps or a hop all the way to the top of the mat. Inhale as you lift halfway up, exhale to fold. Head and neck relax in these folds. On inhale, rise all the way to standing, arms lift. Feel the air pass between the fingertips. And exhale right back down into your fold. So just getting warm here, you can modify this vinyasa however you'd like. Inhale, we'll lift halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step back into your plank. Same exhale, pass down through chaturanga or come to the belly. Inhale to cobra or upward facing. And exhale to downward facing dog. Good, one more round of this. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, all the air out, and then step or hop to the top. Inhale, we'll lift halfway up. Exhale, fold, relax the head. Inhale, rise all the way to standing, arms will lift. And exhale, what last time as you swan dive right back down to your fold. Inhale, we'll lift halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, stepping back. Moving through your flow on that same exhale as you lower, new inhale as you lift, and exhale as you make your way to downward facing. Let's take one breath here. If you want to make it a cleansing breath out of your mouth, go for it. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or hop to the top of the mat. No rush at all. Inhale as you lift halfway up. 
exhale to fold. Inhale, rise all the way to standing. Arms will lift. This time as you exhale, bend your knees, sit down and back into your chair pose. So adjusting anything you need to, find the four corners of the feet. You might decide it's a little more comfortable to take the feet and knees about hips distance apart, like I'm doing, or you can bring the big toes together, heels a little bit apart. Just make sure those knees are kind of lined up with what the ankles are doing. And let's take one more breath here. Take a bonus inhale as you lift the chest, lift the arms another inch. Exhale as you fold down. Inhale as you lift halfway. As you exhale, plant the hands, stepping back, move through your flow or skip it and you can go right back into down dog. I'm not used to talking and doing yoga, <laughs> so I'm gonna skip it. This time in your down dog, we're gonna roll forward into our plank pose. Energize through the back body, so it might be a higher plank than you're used to. So you really feel those muscles of the back body fire up. On an inhale, we'll lift that left leg up to a hover, bend into the knee, take a big breath in. As you exhale, draw the knee forward to the nose. You can do this from tabletop if you'd like. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale to the nose. Last time, inhale. Exhale to the nose. This time as you inhale, keep the knee bent. As you spin to the pinky edge of that right foot, we'll step that left foot on top of the right, coming into side plank. Now you can always modify side plank by coming down to the right shin. Whatever you're doing is right for you, so just breathe into it. Let's take one more breath. And then we'll gently step that left foot through to the top of the mat. Get your bearings, make sure you can draw that outer left hip back. When you're ready, arms will lift. Take an inhale here. Exhale, settle in. One more breath in. And this time as you exhale, we'll reach that left arm back, right arm forward. So you can always modify on the back knee. Your next inhale, if you'd like, move into that reverse crescent, left hand lands, right arm lifts. We'll take one more breath in here. This time as you exhale, we'll cartwheel the hands down through the long edge of the mat, coming into your standasana side lunge at the back of the mat. So you can keep this nice and high, just gently bending into that right knee, or you can drop the hips low. Good. We'll take one more breath on this side. Good. And then from here, we're going to turn to face the back of the mat so that right leg is forward. Tap your left knee down as your right leg straightens out. Half splits. So finding your version of straight through the right leg. Take an inhale as you lift halfway. Exhale to fold. One more inhale. Exhale. From here, let the ball of that right foot land, left toes tuck, inhale, rise into your crescent. This time in your crescent lunge, look up toward the hands, lift up the heart. As you exhale, cactus through the elbows, so bending the elbows in, breathing. One more inhale here. And then as you exhale, release those hands down. Step it back. Maybe keep that right leg lifted as you move through your chaturanga. Let the foot land. Inhale as you come into your up dog or cobra. And exhale to downward facing. Good. So now we're at the back of the mat. Take a couple breaths just to feel your body sort of settle into the shapes and the space that you've created with your practice. When you're ready, on an inhale, we'll roll forward into our plank. This time, we'll hover that right leg up. Energize through the back of the leg, bend into the knee, reach the head toward the toes. Breathing in. As you breathe out, draw the knee to the nose. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale to the nose. One more, just like this. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale as you lift it up. Keep the knee bent as you open out into your side plank. So that right foot lands on top of the left eventually. Right arm lifts. Hips stay nice and elevated here. Don't let them sink down. We'll take one more breath in. As you exhale, we'll step the right foot through to the top of the mat. Once you feel set up, rise up into crescent. High on that back foot, almost like you're wearing a stiletto heel. Drawing that outer right hip back. Take one more inhale. And this time as you exhale, open up into your twist. So right arm reaches back, left arm forward. Couple breaths here. When you're ready, you can move into that back bend if you choose. Right hand lands, left arm lifts, breathing in. One more inhale here. As you exhale, cartwheel the hands down through the long edge of the mat. We'll come to that standasana side lunge at the back. So landing down, take your time. Any variation you'd like to take here. Eventually we'll turn to face the front of the room. Tap the right knee down as you straighten that left leg out. Take an inhale as you lift halfway up. Exhale as you fold. A couple more breaths here. That leg does not have to be perfectly straight. If you're like me, you have tight hamstrings. Put a little bend into the knee. That'll allow you to not stress the back out as you're stretching here. Your next breath will bend into that left knee, rising up to crescent lunge from the left leg. Arms will lift, hips settle into the earth. Good, this time in your next exhale, we'll move into those cactus elbows, bending in, opening up across the chest. One more breath here. Slowly releasing those hands down. We'll step back, maybe you hover that left leg up as you pass through your chaturanga. Both feet land as you inhale, rise up to your back bend of choice. Exhale to your downward facing dog. Good, while you're here, you've got a little extra time. So if you wanna tap the knees down, shift the hips back to the heels, go for it. Just take this time just to kind of feel your heart beating and get settled. Maybe rolling the forehead side to side, massaging across the forehead into those thinking muscles. Let's take one more breath. Good. Once you feel ready, press yourself up and back into your downward facing dog once more. In your down dog, we'll take an inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale all the air out and then step or maybe lightly hop to the top of the mat. Inhale as you lift halfway up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, bend the knees, lift the arms, chair pose. You can go for the same variation you took on that first side or switch it up. Let's take one more breath here. And then exhale this time, just come to standing, draw the hands together in front of the heart. Good, on your next breath in, sweep the arms up. As you exhale once more, sit into your chair. Just taking a big breath in here, maybe even cactusing the elbows, opening up. And then exhale, round the back as you fold forward. Inhale as you lift halfway. As you exhale, gently step or hop back right through your flow. We'll all meet in down dog so you can eventually head there. Maybe go straight there. Inhale in your down dog as you roll forward to plank. Exhale to settle. Inhale, lift your left leg up to a hover, breathing in. 
bend into the knee as you exhale draw the knee to the nose just one of these inhale pick it back up keep the knee bent this time as you roll to the pinky edge of the right foot tap the left toes behind you lift the hips coming into wild thing letting the head and neck relax that left arm just dangles when you're ready we'll begin to step all the way around with that left foot to the top of the mat with control on an inhale rise up into crescent exhale to settle we'll take a big breath in as you exhale left arm sweeps back right arm forward take a big breath in here as you exhale reverse your crescent so right arm lifts up and back take one more inhale as you exhale cartwheel the hands down move through the long edge of the mat send asana lunge to the right this time we're going to take that right arm out to the right side of it left arm up take an inhale here and then as you exhale launch forward into your warrior two good and arms and shoulders settle you can take any variation of the arms that you would like here maybe tuck your knuckles over to the right drop your right ear to the right shoulder One more breath wherever you are. We'll flip that left palm, reverse your warrior as you breathe in. As you breathe out, move through the long edge of the mat once more into your Stendhasana lunge. Turn to face the back of the mat. Tap your left knee down as the right leg straightens out, half splits. Take an inhale to lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale, roll forward. Let the front of that right foot land as you lift up to crescent lunge. Maybe cactusing through the elbows. We'll take one more breath here. Good. This time, we're going to let those hands land just a little bit in front of that right foot, maybe to a block if you have one. We'll begin to launch off of that left leg, coming into your warrior three. So heart reaches forward, back body is really strong here. Maybe experiment with reaching one arm back. Maybe the other. It's okay to shake, it's okay to fall and get back up, just breathe. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, step that left foot down step back move through your flow we'll all meet in down dog if you want to go straight there good let's take an inhale here exhale it out inhale rolling forward back into your plank right leg will lift this time as you breathe and bend the knee tap toward the back of the head exhale draw the knee forward to the nose this time, inhale, lift it up, open out like you're going to side plank, but tap the right toes behind the left leg for your wild thing. Take one big breath in, and as you exhale, gently begin to step that right foot through to the top of the mat. Inhale, rise up to crescent. Exhale, settle. Take another inhale here. As you exhale, open out into your twist, right arm back, left arm forward. And then from here, right hand can land to the back leg, low back if you'd like, left arm lifts up. Just taking one breath in. And then as you exhale, gently cargo through the long edge of the mat, making your way back to Standasana. This time in your Standasana, left hand goes out to the left side, right arm lifts high. Breathing in here. And then as you exhale, launching forward into your warrior two. This is a great moment to get reacquainted with your breath. These moments of stillness are great for settling back into your intention. Take any stretches or variations you took on the other side. We'll take two more breaths. Arms come out to level once more. Flip the right palm on an inhale. Reverse your warrior. As you exhale, cartwheel the hands down through the long edge of the mat once more. This time we'll turn to face the front of the mat. 
Left leg is forward, right knee taps, coming into your half splits. Good, from here, begin to bend into that left knee. Right toes will tuck, lift up into your crescent, arms will lift, exhale, settle. Good, this time maybe finding your cactus elbows. We'll take one more breath here. And then from here, we'll place those hands out in front of us, maybe to a prop, if you used it on the other side. And then again, just experiment with lifting one arm and then the other, finding more of back strength here and thinking about folding forward. So really feel your chest lift almost as if you're in your cobra pose. And we'll take one more breath. Slowly stepping that right foot to the back of the mat. We'll plant those hands down, step back, move through a flow if you'd like. All the way to your downward facing. This time in your down dog, we'll take an inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Step or hop to the top. Inhale as you lift halfway up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise all the way to standing, arms will lift. Maybe dive back. I like to make a little cradle for my head by bending at the elbows, dropping the thumbs toward the neck. And then eventually hands come to the heart. A little bow of the head just to connect with that heartbeat. Feel your body getting warm and aware. Sometimes in the practice we get lost in the chaos and in the thinking of what we're doing. So these moments of stillness are for you to catch up to this moment. And let's take one more breath here. Good, from here, we're gonna lift the arms up as you breathe in. As you breathe out, sit into your chair pose. This time, keep your knees wide. If you have sensitive knees, place a blanket out in front of you for support. We're gonna to begin to bend down slowly into a little toe squat. So lifting the heels up, getting the shins somewhat parallel. Now, since your knees are apart, this is gonna be challenging to hold, but do your best. You can fall, you can get back up. We'll begin to place those hands to the low back here and then gently tap your knees down to the earth or to your blanket, pick your hips up. So you're in a kneeling position here. Make sure that your hips are lined up right above the knees. Take an inhale here as you lift your chest, lift your heart. Exhale to settle, feeling the core ignite. Hips stay right over the knees here, continuing to go back into your camel pose. You can keep the hands here for support or release that left hand down to the left foot. Right arm can reach up and overhead. Continuing to send that front body forward. Breathing deeply. Your next inhale, rise back up. Arms will lift. Exhale, hands to the heart. Maybe sitting back to the heels for a moment. Dropping your chin in towards your chest, rolling your head side to side. And then when you're ready, we'll move to the other side or just doing one more of those. So hands will come to the low back, heart will lift. Again, you can stay here if this is plenty, if you didn't add the twist back bend on the other side. And if you'd like to go for it, this time right hand will land to the heel, left arm lifts up, continue to press the hips forward so your low back can be nice and long as the belly engages. Let's take one more breath here. Inhale, rise back up, arms lift. Exhale, hands land to the lap, sitting into a little toe stretch. Now from here, this is the fun part. You can scoot your knees and feet together. 
but we're gonna begin to ignite through the core. So you'll kind of round your back like an angry cat and begin to slowly lift up. So you can get both knees at once into your toe spot. Don't you feel like a ninja now? <laughs> I always feel like I defy gravity when I do that. All right, and then from here with control, we're gonna rise all the way up to Tadasana. Arms lift, legs straighten, breathing in. Exhale, swan dive down to your fold. In your forward fold this time, we'll take the feet a little bit wider than the hips. Toes go out, heels go in, begin to bend into your knees, squatting down into Malasana. Now you can sit onto a block. You can even stay higher here. Just gonna get a little bonus workout. So do what's, what's best for your body, your joints. Nothing should be in pain. Sitting up nice and tall here, feeling the pressure of your hands coming together as your knees press into your elbows, your elbows into your knees. We'll take one more breath here. We'll begin to take that left hand out to the left side. Right arm lifts up. Good, and then we'll come back to center and go to the other side. Right hand comes down, left arm lifts up. Inhale back to center. This time lift your hips up halfway into a fold. So lift or bring your feet back to parallel. Keep your spine lifted into that half fold. From here, we're gonna to begin to bend into that left knee. Left hand can go out to the left um, and forward about a foot. And then we're gonna to begin to lift up and open into a twist. So right arm lifts up, heart opens up to the right side of the room. Begin to transfer your weight into that left foot. You'll begin to lift the heel of the right foot first and then bend the knee, draw the heel into the glute and then open out into your balancing half moon. Just breathing here. So your left knee can be bent, your left hand can be elevated. In fact, that's my favorite way to do it. My block is just not right here. Good, one more breath here. Stepping that right foot to the back of the mat. On an inhale, straighten your left leg out as your left arm lifts up. And then as you exhale, level your arms to a T position, bump your hips toward the back of the room as you place your left hand to the shin or to a block. Heart is nice and open here. Let's take a big breath in. Exhale it out. And then from here, slowly begin to walk through the long edge of the mat all the way into that standasana lunge in the right leg. Hi, Anna. Good. From here, we'll turn to face the back of the mat, coming into your half split. Take an inhale as you lift halfway. Exhale to fold. Good. From here, we'll bend into that right knee, rise up into your crescent, arms will lift. Exhale to settle. Moving into your warrior three again for a moment. So launching forward off of that left leg. You can modify keeping the hands down. This time we're actually gonna move into standing splits. So left leg will go high as you fold over the right leg, just like you would in a standing forward fold. Your left leg doesn't have to be much higher than it is in warrior three. I like to take my right hand and kind of wedge it into the hip crease for a little extra length on the side body. And we'll just take one more breath here. From here, we'll step that left foot back. We're gonna place that left hand down to the floor as your right arm lifts up, coming into a twist here. This time in your twist, you're gonna to begin to pivot into a little side plank with that right foot stamped about halfway down your mat. The left foot, you're on the pinky edge of that foot. Take an inhale as you lift your hips high, reach that right arm overhead. As you exhale, tip your hips down toward the earth. They don't have to touch, just find a little stretch through the left side body. Inhale, we'll lift up. Exhale, tap. One more inhale to lift. Exhale to tap. 
Good, this time we're gonna be in to just bend into that left knee, coming into your cow face legs. So what the idea here is to stack your legs one on top of the other, but sometimes we get wonky in our hips. Totally cool to take that left leg forward, the bottom leg. Good, and we'll come into a shoulder stretch here so that right hand will go down toward the low back, left arm up toward the sky. Maybe walking the fingertips close, or you can just use your strap if you've got one, or your shirt like I'm using to make a connection. And we'll just take two more breaths here, lengthening into the spine. And then from here, you can release the arms and just fold forward on your next exhale. So if you've got the bottom leg straight, you get a nice little hamstring stretch. So maybe cushion the back of that left knee if you need to. Head and neck relax here. Just take about two more breaths. Good. From here, we'll rise back up, bend into your left knee if it is forward. And what we're going to do is a little spin move here. So walk your hands over to the left, begin to pivot on the feet, coming into a wide-legged fold. So head reaches down toward the ground, legs are wide, to your comfort level. So you don't have to go super duper far. And then you can move here. Nothing is glued, so if anything feels nice to add in, take it. We'll take about four more breaths here. And then from here, lift yourself about halfway up. Breathing in, get your bearings, make sure you're not dizzy. And as you exhale, walk around toward the top of the mat. Just where we began, we're going to just step back this time, move through a flow just to sort of clear the slate. So if you'd like to take a vinyasa, take it. We've got one more side of the last sequence before we start cooling down. So this is your pep talk moment. Coming back to your intention, your breath. As long as you're breathing, you are practicing yoga. From here, bend your knees. Look forward, step or hop if you've got the energy coming to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way to standing. Arms will lift. Maybe cradling the back of the head. And then eventually coming back into your fold. We'll lift halfway up so we can take the feet a little bit wider. Toes out, heels and sitting into your malasana squat. Good. So you've got some time this time, instead of the little twists from side to side, to stay here. Or if you'd like to try out your crow pose, you can take the hands forward and begin to kind of scoot the feet in about hips distance, plug the knees into the back of the triceps. As you shift forward, look forward, round through your back like an angry cat, and then maybe you begin to lift up one set of toes, and then the other, and then maybe both. Bending through those elbows will give you a nice shelf. You've got to breathe through it. Let's take two more. Eventually, you can set the feet back down. We'll all meet back in our malasana for one final breath in. Maybe sigh it out. Inhale, we'll lift up halfway into our forward bend. Exhale here. This time we'll begin to twist open toward the left side of the room. So right knee bends, right hand lands at a slight angle forward and over. And then you can begin to situate your weight into that right foot. Begin to lift the heel of the left foot, eventually the whole foot, drawing the heel in toward the glute as you open out. Good. And then from here, maybe kicking that leg straight back, balancing half moon. Again, finding some height for that right hand can be really helpful. We'll take about two to three more breaths here. You don't have to perfectly stack anything, just breathe. Good. 
From here, we'll slowly begin to step all the way back, reverse your triangle. So straighten the front leg, lift the right arm. As you exhale, level the arms to a T, hips begin to bump back. As you lean forward, right hand will land, left arm will lift. Take one really big breath in and out. Let's take one more just for good measure. As you exhale, we'll slowly begin a cartwheel through the long edge of the mat, coming into your standasana lunge. Good, and then from here, we'll begin to slowly turn to face the back of the mat, coming into your half splits. And then when you're ready, we'll begin to bend into that left knee, rise up to crescent, arms will lift. This time we'll begin to move toward our warrior three. <clears throat> Hands can stay down this time as we'll be moving in that direction. And when you're ready, we'll begin to use an exhale to fold over that left leg, maybe lifting the right leg another inch higher, but no pressure. For me, I don't need to change it much to feel this. Do your best to keep all five toes of that right foot pointing down. I know it's challenging. Breathe. And then from here, we'll slowly begin to step that foot all the way back. Right hand will land as we begin to open out into that side plank. So now the left foot will kind of walk over toward the center of the mat. Right hand is supporting you as that left arm lifts up and overhead, hips lift as well. As you exhale, begin to dip those hips down toward the earth, reach your left arm back. Inhale, pick it back up. Exhale, dip it down. We'll do one more, inhale. And exhale, dipping it down. We'll slowly begin to move into our cow face legs here. So stacking left on top of rock right this time. I'm turning the other way now so you can see the arm variation. Left hand comes to your low back, right arm comes up. So however you wanna support yourself again, you can just use your shirt or you can find a connection through the fingers or use a strap. A necktie is a great home tool. We'll just take a couple more breaths. From here, we'll release the arms and just move into a fold on your next exhale. So just folding forward, take your time. Let's take two more breaths here. From here, we'll slowly lift the chest back up. We're gonna move into our spin move, so hands go over to the right. And begin to gently pivot on the feet as you come into your wide-legged fold. So start with an inhale to lift you halfway up, and then gently fold on your exhale. Again, you've got some time here. Maybe walk the hands forward, take a super wide-legged down dog. You could even take an inversion here if you have headstand in your practice. That's a nice one to transition to. We'll take one more breath wherever you are. Making your way around toward the top of the mat. From here, we'll step back again, move through a flow here. Maybe your final flow of the practice. And 
And then from here, we're gonna make our way into a resting position, but first we're gonna to begin to bend the knees and just hover them right above the mat. So just getting a little bit of fire here before we ease into cooling off. Take an inhale as you stretch your heart forward like cow pose, and as you exhale, shift your hips back toward the heels, keep the knees hovering, and then rest your head toward the earth, turbo child's pose. Breathing into the core, breathe into the legs, three breaths. Last one in, you got it, I know it's not fun. <laughs> Exhale, land those knees down, take them wide. Big toes come together as your toes untuck, rest into child's. Take a couple of deep breaths into your back here. Again, maybe roll the head side to side. I like to bend at my elbows when I don't have someone here to adjust me. And then take my thumbs to the base of the neck and just give myself a little neck massage. Let's take one more breath here. When you're ready, we're going to begin to slowly come up into tabletop. And we're going to begin to draw that left knee forward toward the left wrist, setting up for pigeon pose. So the knee stays to the left, toes walk over to the right. Right leg can go straight back behind you, or you can lean over and just gently draw that right knee up toward the left heel. Whatever works. Take a couple breaths upright just to breathe into the length of the spine. Eventually folding yourself forward over that shin. Maybe making your way a little deeper. If there's space, no forcing anything, just find your pose for today. Let's take one more breath. Inhale, slowly pick your chest back up. Before we move to the other side, we're going to rotate open to the right. And then if you don't have a block, you can just use your shin or a pillow, a book, whatever you've got around. We're going to place that prop to the inside or outside of the right leg, whatever works. Right elbow will land onto the block, head will rest to the hand. And you'll just begin to lift that left arm up and overhead. And just resting it onto your head, letting it dangle. You can go deeper here by moving the block down a level or two, walking it further toward the foot. Good, and then from here, just gently begin to release. And we'll place that block somewhere close by. Left hand will land slightly in line with the left hip you'll begin to press into the shin of the left leg the heel of the right foot as you rise up to your modified wild thing and then slowly come around toward the top of the mat back into your tabletop this time right knee will draw forward to the wrist shin will land left leg might scoop back whatever variation you took on that first side Once you've taken those first couple of breaths, begin to make your way forward. Finding that initial surge of sensation in the body and just pausing into that. Just a couple more breaths here. And 
Last one in and out. Slowly begin to press into the hands, lifting the chest, and we'll open out toward that left side. Good, so setting yourself up first, making sure both hips are grounded. We'll place the prop of your choice to the inside or outside of the leg. This time the left elbow lands onto the prop and the head rests into that left hand. And then the right arm can reach up and overhead. Let's just take a couple more breaths here, really breathing into this right side body that's getting a lot of attention. The deeper you breathe, the deeper the stretch can move into the body. And when you're ready, the head will begin to lift off of the hand, slowly rising up. Hmm. Placing that right hand to the top of the mat, we'll move into that modified wild thing by pressing into the right shin, lifting the left arm up and overhead, and then coming around back in to your tabletop. This time we'll just scoot the knees forward, begin to cross at the ankles, rolling back, setting up for a seated forward fold. So both heels are at the top of the mat. Hips are nice and grounded. I like to roll the cushion out from underneath me a little bit, get a little more grounded. On an inhale, we'll lift the arms up, stretch the chest forward, and as you exhale, begin to melt forward to your fold. Maybe letting the forehead land onto a block, rolling a blanket up under the knees to support the hamstrings. About three more breaths, maybe finding a little more depth. And then slowly, just maintaining the roundedness in your back here, we'll begin to roll all the way onto our backs. Take your time, maybe taking your block with you. Once you come down, letting the body settle into that nice pull of gravity here. And we'll begin to move into about two back bends, so you can choose to support yourself through both of these with a block or whatever prop you have nearby. Heels come in close to the hips. You're going to press into the feet as you lift your hips up, roll your shoulders underneath you. You can stay active here, maybe bending at the elbows, palms, hover above the belly. You can interlace the hands under your back. Maybe placing your block toward the sacrum for a little support there. About three more breaths in this first one. Good, if you are supported, you're welcome to stay here. I'm just gonna remove my support just for demonstration purposes. So if you're not supported, come down slowly to your back, maybe windshield wiper the knees a couple times. We'll do one more back bend, about eight breaths this time. So once more, setting up for bridge pose on an inhale, press to the feet, lift the hips. Good, now you can stay here. Maybe again, choose to support yourself. You could change up the legs, the arms in your supported bridge. Or if you'd like to go to wheel pose, you'll take the hands behind the shoulders, drawing the elbows in toward one another as you press slowly up, straightening the arms, keeping the belly engaged to support your low back. Head and neck, relax. One more breath. And then if 
if you're in your wheel pose, slowly coming back to your back. If you're in your bridge, it feels good for another couple breaths. Please feel free to stay. Hmm. And then after you've moved through some counterbalancing movements, maybe that windshield wiper motion, you can eventually draw your knees into the chest, coming into a nice little stretch, maybe even pulling your forehead forward to the knees. And we'll move into a spinal twist here. So arms can go wide, maybe cactusing the elbows. Knees will drop over to the left first. Maybe the gaze falls over to that right side. And then eventually we'll just switch to the other side. Knees fall to the right. Hips might slightly scoot over to the left just to stack the spine a little better. Eventually, when you're ready, bringing everything back to center, giving yourself any final pose that you need to work out any last little kinks through the body. Eventually, finding your Shavasana position. So maybe it's just how we began the practice in your reclined bound angle with the knees wide. Or if you'd like to take the legs straight into your traditional corpse pose, arms at the sides, go for it. We can also take legs up the wall, which is my personal favorite. So I think I'll take that one. So just find your position. And before we drift away into some rest, we're gonna take five rounds of Brahmari breath, which is your humming bees breath. So find some stillness through your body. And the way that this breath works is that you're gonna take normal inhales and on the exhales, you're gonna make a humming noise instead of just exhaling. So it'll sound like, hmm. And you'll go for the full length of your exhale. So it'll be much longer than that. And then once you complete your breath, just begin a new round on your own. You don't have to wait for me. So we're gonna do five of those just to calm the nervous system, this breath activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which allows for us to rest. So we'll start with just a cleansing breath. So breathing in through your nose, sigh out of your mouth. And we'll begin, Brahmari, inhale. After that fifth round has come and gone, just take time to move back to your natural breathing pattern, one you don't even have to think about. Let the body relax as you take rest. <laughs> 